Let's go to the receiving game. And the receivers, we know who the two receivers are on this team. Let's start with Mike Evans, who was the wide receiver seven last year. Every year, they expect him to fall off for being a wide receiver too. And we get top 10 to 12 seasons every single year for Mike Evans. It's crazy. And, you know, we'll see where his ADP shakes out. He's just, people get tired of the name Mike Evans. And we know he gets 1,000 yards. But dude had 1,255 yards last year, 13 touchdowns. He had almost 80 catches. Like, it's not like he's a one-trick pony with the yards. He does it all. So he, he's only had one season in his whole career where he hasn't been a top 17 wide receiver. So no matter where you draft him, he's probably going to be somewhere of a value or where you drafted him. Like you get really good value on Mike Evans. And just because he's 31 doesn't mean that now, oh, we got to throw Mike, Mike Evans away. Now he's going to start to fall off. He's still producing at an elite level as evidenced by last season's numbers. So I think we can expect another top 15 season out of Mike Evans. And the crazy part is you're getting him around that value anyway. So Mike Evans, man, he's a wide receiver one and a wide receiver two's draft spot. He's been there for the last, I don't know how many years. A lot of times people, um, you know, initially hate on him because he was inconsistent or they said he was too touchdown dependent. And it's like, dude's had a thousand yards every year. He's a big time receiver that makes big plays. I don't know what the hate is for Mike Evans. I'll never understand it. He will be a value again in these in this year's draft. Um, another wide receiver with promise this season, Chris Godwin. Obviously had a had a decent year last year. He was wide receiver 29 on the year, which, you know, for Chris Godwin, we've seen him be like a, a, a top two, top three wide receiver at times, uh, playing out the slot. You know, it was 20, 2019, 2020. Um, but I think this year, one of the things that the coaching staff has emphasized is that they want to get Chris Godwin back in the slot a little bit more. And that's where he had a lot of his success fantasy wise. We were taking this guy as a top 15 receiver. And I know the situation was different, but Baker proved that he can carry, you know, two really good receivers. He had Chris Godwin last year had 83 catches, uh, 1,024 yards, only two touchdowns, right? So if Chris Godwin had six to seven touchdowns, now we're talking about a whole different player. And if we can get those receptions closer to 90 to 95, uh, I think Chris Godwin could be in for a sneaky year. So I really like the value with Chris Godwin. I think he's a safe player, right? He normally maxes out somewhere around five touchdowns. If we get similar yardage, 1,100 yards, 85 catches, you know, five touchdowns, I think that's going to be a back end wide receiver two, high end wide receiver three. So we could find value with Chris Godwin this year. The ceiling might be a, limit, a little bit limited because Baker's the quarterback, because Mike Evans is there, uh, because Rashad White's so active out of the backfield. But Chris Godwin's going to have a role and be probably a very safe asset. In your PPR leagues, don't be scared to draft these two together. Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. A lot of times you'll get into a spot where you draft Mike Evans early because he's a value and then Chris Godwin's available later. They tend to offset each other. Sometimes they both have good games. So I wouldn't be scared to draft either one of these receivers, let alone both of them because of the value. 